I'm Pat. And I'm Alex. And we're here to explore celebrity wine. Yes, Pat has never tasted these celebrity wines before and he doesn't know who the celebrities are or what the wines are. So before we do the wines themselves, I want to talk a little bit about quality. Because for me, it doesn't matter whose name is on the label. What matters is what's in the glass. Though for many viewers, who's ever on the label or owns the property is a big deal and that may give them extra value. And if they're willing to pay extra for that, God bless them. <laughs> Me being a bit of a cheapskate, uh, I want as much flavor as possible for each dollar that I spend. So the elements of quality in wine are not too dissimilar from elements of quality with other food and beverages, okay? So let's say apples. You can go to the store and you can sometimes see these beautiful shiny apples. They're red, they look perfect. And you say, my God, that's really great quality. Mm -hmm. And you bring them home, you taste them, and they're tasteless, right? So looks good, doesn't taste all that good. Or you can have a apple, paradoxically, that you buy from a orchard in the fall, and it doesn't look as pretty, but it's got much more flavor. Right, so it all depends upon what somebody's after. And so similarly with wine, wines that taste better are higher quality. And so by taste better, I mean how much aroma and flavor do I get? Are there just one flavor or are there two or three different interesting flavors? Hopefully no bad flavors, right? <laughs> okay. And then we want to see those flavors last a long time. In white wines, there's also what we call balance. You're an ex-gymnast, yeah. right? You've been on the balance beam, <laughs> yeah. right? Is a drag falling off the balance beam? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so balance in white wines is that we have alcohol and or sweetness on one side being balanced by acidity. And so acidity gives freshness to the wine. And some folks like a little bit of acid, some prefer a lot of acid. But we're gonna see where we are with these wines and how much see flavor they give us. The acid. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? So let's yes. taste this first one on the left. Let's take a sniff of it. So it's got lots of pear and peach and some floral notes. And when I first tasted this wine, I missed it also had some green notes on it. This is a tough wine for me to do blind. Now, let's taste it. <laughs> I usually drink my wine. <laughs> So we got some of the same flavors, but we got more of that citrus and slightly green, like green apple. Pretty good acidity. It's fairly full in the mouth. I don't get any vanilla or toasty oat flavors. I don't get any buttery popcorn notes. So it gives me some idea as to how the wine was made. We've tasted these previously. This is a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Right? New Zealand is one of the great places in the world for Sauvignon Blanc fairly true to its variety. I get lots of flavor up front, and for me the flavor lasts a long time. So this is a good plus to very good quality wine. Not the best New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc I've ever had, but very nice. How much would you pay for this wine? That's the question. How much would I pay? I'll swallow this one. I find it tart. It is tart. That's the acid. Oh. <laughs> but I've got this special ingredient for you, Alex. When you find something a little too tart, mm -hmm. we can always put a little bit of sugar in, and that goes a long way to making you happy. So the flavor lasts a long time here for me. I still have flavors, pleasant flavors in my mouth. And so um, I'd probably pay 22 to $28 for this bottle of wine. So this is actually Sarah Jessica Parker's wine mm -hmm. in Vivo X that is $19. So it's delivering. It, yeah. It's delivering nice flavor. The celebrities have, have come through. It's, it's also a 2019 from New Zealand. Uh, two thumbs up. Let's look at the next one, the middle one. This one had similar color. It had some slight bubbles on the bottom, some carbon dioxide. Is that spitting? You could swallow Alex. Or Again. <laughs> this wine, when we were tasting through them, you said, ah, oh, they sort of taste all the same to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it turns out, right, that there are some similarities between wine number one and wine number two. This one's got less 
aromatics on the nose. There's not much there. Yeah. It's a bit muted. It's a little bit less full or less rich, but it's got really nice acidity. This is even has higher acidity. The flavors aren't as interesting, aren't as long. For me, and we've realized as well, this has, has some green notes similar to the first wine. This is also Sauvignon Blanc. This is Sauvignon Blanc from Italy. It's from the old world. Uh, the Italians can produce Sauvignon Blanc, not as well as the French, and this is not nearly as well made as the first one, as the, the New Zealand one. So Sauvignon Blanc from Italy, probably from uh, northern Italy, from Friuli. And my guess is that this probably as well is going for that 22 plus dollars, and I'd be willing to pay about 9 to 11 for it. This is actually Mary J. Blige's Sun Goddess Sauvignon Blanc, which is also $19. Mm -hmm. So, it all depends upon what you're looking for. If you love acidity, if you're an acid freak, right, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mean LSD, uh, <laughs> that would be their wine for them. If you want flavor, lots of it, and longer lasting, the first one is your bet. And let's look at the third one. Again, similar color. You know, just drinking these wines has caused the sun to come out. Isn't that nice? This one smells very strong. It's got... I think that one smells the strongest. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things that can give you stronger smelling flavors, mm -hmm. or what you're perceiving as stronger. Higher alcohol can make things a bit uh, more aromatic. So I think this one has slightly higher alcohol. Riper fruit from a warmer climate. No bubbles. No bubbles. It's got lots of things going on. It's got apricot and peach and some mineral notes and some floral notes. I don't get any oak. I don't get any butteriness. This one's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I think this one tastes the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be. Really? <laughs> and this is the richest of the wines. It's got the lowest acidity, so you are not a natural free. Mm. Smoother, so there's a hint of tannin on it from the skin. So in the finish, you get a slight dryingness in your mouth. That's from the tannin. And this I would be putting in a warmer climate. I'm tempted to say New World, but it could be from Rhone varieties in the New World, Rhone varieties, or some blend uh, from, from the Rhone Valley. I'm not sure. Where is it from? This one is from Spain. Spain. Warm climate. And it's Cameron Diaz's Aveline. Or Aveline. I'm going to say I'm, I'm not sure. But... It's her white blend. It's actually, it's actually pretty nice. Do we know what the blend is on this or not? We don't, but it's made with organic grapes. Made with organic grapes. So organic grapes meaning that they can use a little sulfur on them. They're not using pesticides or herbicides in the in the vineyard. If you're in a warm, dry place like Spain, mm -hmm. where there's not much fungus, you can do that pretty readily. And they tell you how to pronounce it. Avali. Aveline. Aveline. Though you would expect if it's Spanish, it'd be Aveline. But anyway, Aveline. Price-wise, my sense is that this would be in the upper teens to low 20s. What would you pay for it? Uh, I would probably be willing to spring for you know, $20, $22. This is actually $24. Yeah, that's within the, within the range. So the organic grapes, probably. Delivered nice. There's no flavors. additives, they said as well. Well, good. So we like the wines in general and didn't feel like we were getting ripped off on them. No. I think my favorite is definitely Cameron Diaz's Aveline. Aveline. Did you buy it for 24 No. Well, it's tough because Alex is a recent I'm college poor. graduate. <laughs> Maybe in a few years. Is Pat repaying? Yeah, I drank it. <laughs> See, that's the difference, is that there's a way to look at wine price to value, quality ratio. So one, would I be willing to spend my money on the wine? And then the second would be, would I be willing to spend somebody else's money on the wine? Yeah. Your money, Bernadette's money, <laughs> Henry's money. Uh, <laughs> if my parents got me this one. <laughs> okay, so we tasted three celebrity white wines. They actually were better than I had anticipated. And... Do you typically buy celebrity wines or no? No, I, much in the same way that if I was going to be casting a movie, I wouldn't say, let's go down to a winery and let's find some people to star in our movie. Yeah. Right. No, I want preferably 
wine people who've been there for a generation or two making the wine. Though there are newcomers who can do, do very well. Celebrities have something essential for learning a lot about wine, yeah. money, so they can have the opportunity to buy and taste lots of wines beforehand, have visited wine country many times, fell in love with it, and then decided to invest it, and then have enough money to hire uh, talented people. Yeah, that makes sense. Easier said than done. Please leave us a, a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Yeah,